This video is about how to come to terms with the way you have lived your life so far. So people have regrets about how they lived. And that's a very common thing um, because, you know, we all want the best for ourselves. We want our lives to be brilliant. We want our lives to be meaningful. And our past choices, they get in the way of thinking that because they differ from what we think now. So, for example, I used to smoke cigarettes. And um, when I'm having cardio problems at my gym, when I'm sparring other people, and I feel really gassed out, I regret a lot. Oh, I shouldn't have smoked. And, um, you know, if you had addiction problems before, you probably have a lot of regret about, like, your past um, in substance abuse. And a lot of people, um, especially males these days, have um, regrets about their masturbation habits. Relationships is also a great uh, place for regrets. Oh, I should have treated this person better. I should have not dated this person, blah, blah, blah. Or I should have treated, I don't know. You, you get the drift, right? So, very common issue in um, our brain is to really glorify what could have been instead of what has been. And uh, it can be, again, like wide variety of things like college choices, blah, 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 blah. You get the drift. So, how do we come to terms with that? And um, another big category that I do want to address is um, things that you can't forgive yourself for. A lot of people come to coaching because they can't forgive themselves. So, for example, like weight loss is um, not only just your you know regrets about um, your dietary habits, but also like not being able to forgive yourself for getting into such a like problematic state. Like, oh, I'm so obese and I can't forgive myself for that. And uh, if you were like, if you had uh, violent struggles with somebody, whether it did, even if it didn't go physical, if you had violent struggles with other people and you're a peaceful person at heart, it's, it can be very painful to live with that kind of memory. And if I'm being a little more like, um, you know, if the raise, stakes are raised a little bit high, like uh, when family members pass away or when friends, um, relieve your life you have a lot of regrets about how you acted towards them and what that caused some things to be irrep ir irreparable and that hurts so how do we come to terms with that and that is so again the base fundamental um foundation is that we are perfect we are complete, right? And so what we really need to evaluate is at the time of the past decisions, you already evaluated everything that you could have thought of and you decided on the decision that you made. And at that time, you weren't thinking, oh, you know what? This choice is better, but fuck that. I'm going to go with the subpar choice. You weren't doing that. Every time you have a good choice, you are doing it. So, for example, like you may regret not studying hard enough to get to, into that really um, prestigious university. So you might think, well, I could have studied, but I didn't. And now I failed all my classes and now my future was ruined. But what you're failing to realize is that your brain considered studying. And with studying comes this immense amount of stress. With studying comes this lack of freedom. With studying comes this pressure that your brain doesn't want to deal with. With studying comes all this discomfort. With not studying comes a lot of joy. Yeah, it comes at the cost of your grades, but comes a lot, with not studying comes a lot of freedom, a lot of alternative things you can do, a lot of video games that can potentially be played, a lot of basketball games that can be played, a lot of socializing that you can do with your friends. So to your brain, what's the better option? 
it's easy to look back and like, oh, I should have studied. But then at the time, studying must have been really hard and stressful for you. So we're failing to see the bigger picture because we're so used to looking at our lives with a critical lens. The whole reason why we think we, we have regrets is we have ideas about what, what our life should be because we think we aren't perfect. We think we aren't good enough. But that is why I start with the fundamental foundation. I already am complete. I already am perfect. So I don't need to be anything. I didn't need to go to a higher education institution. There's no law says that everybody has to go to higher education. There's no law that says I need a prestigious I need a prestigious job to be happy. Like look at the people in Bhutan, the happiest place on earth, right? They're happy with, with what they have. And you know, like um happy people are everywhere. A lot of internet arguments are like, oh, African people must be so poor and unfortunate. No, there are, there are really happy people in Africa. We think materialism and um, having lots of money and capital equals happiness, but there's a lot of miserable billionaires out there. And there's a lot of happy people across so many really varied lifestyles. There have been happy people in the medieval times in Europe. There have been happy people in post-war Korea. There have been happy people in um, India under British rule. The happy, people, happy people have been everywhere. It's not a requirement, but society primes us. Our parents prime us to think in that sort of way. So our lives are already meaningful because we have always made the best choices for ourselves. And now comes the now with that, let's try to reinterpret reinterpret the so much regret that we have around our actions, and especially when we can't forgive ourselves. Yeah, the actions that we did, they make us feel bad, and they may be really bad actions. But doing bad actions didn't come out of malice from your heart. And maybe it was done with malice from your heart, but that malice doesn't grow out of nowhere. The malice is for it to grow. It's just like any other emotion. For you to feel really proud of yourself, you need a good foundation of love and positive reinforcement and um, a lot of trial and error and belief and with experience that you can make it, right? Malice also feeds on hate. Oh, you're worthless. And people treating you like you don't matter. That's how negative thoughts are reinforced and negative feelings of violence and explosion and anger that cannot be contained. It grows to an uncontainable state because it was fostered. It was growing. And it never had the chance to expel itself. It never had the chance to express itself. So mentally healthy people, they cry too, right? Because mentally healthy people realize that expressing emotions is a very natural part of human life. It's like feeling sad is an emotion. Like if you watch Pixar's Inside Out, you know what I'm talking about, right? Like sadness is an emotion. It's a, it's a natural thing. But why do we only celebrate joy? Like, I don't, I don't, if you're feeling sad, um, I'm not like, yeah, you're sad, Th that, it's weird, right? But like, when you're feeling sad, I I acknowledge that it's a thing that's happening for you because it's natural. Like, it's like, oh, I'm hungry. Like, it's like the same thing. Like, people may say it's a physical thing versus it's an emotional thing. But to me, it's the same. It's a natural part of human experience. If you're angry, I can sympathize with that. If you're depressed, I can sympathize with that because it's part of the human experience. But why celebrate some parts and why celebrate not why discourage other parts? That's what makes it shameful. That's what makes it high. That's what it makes. That's what makes it uncontainable inside. So you have all these regrets about past choices that you made and you can't forgive yourself. But those decisions again came from an intelligent place. And what's important is 
because of those decisions and your actions, it is how you know. How it is how you are informed. If I never touch the hot stove, I can't tell if it's gonna be hot or not. If I don't leave a stone unturned, I never know if it's if there's gold underneath there. So everything that we do, every action that we do is a manifest it's a manifestation of our personal power and our curiosity. What what happens if I do that? What if I had what happens if I don't do that? You are honoring your curiosity in your experience and that is what you did it's not you did you did this unilaterally bad thing that you should be ashamed of that you should feel bad about no it is an action of your personal power being expressed it is an action of your curiosity expressing itself because you want to know and now as a side effect of that you do know and not all decisions lead to something that you want, right? But because of that action, you know. And that's the valuable part. It doesn't just come with a pack of regrets. It comes with the really valuable experience of knowing what happens. Because that is going to be what feeds your next experience. You have become wiser because of it. You can inform future decisions better because of it. So I'm not really encouraging you to feel better about them or think positively about them. No, I understand. Some decisions can hurt. Some decisions can be really ugh, filled with a lot of regrets. I'm saying... Yeah, accept that. And at the same time, it comes with a lot of other parts. So embrace the whole experience of that decision. Experience the whole package of the outcome of your choices and your actions in the past. That way, you're continuing to see yourself as a capable, perfect and complete person because no matter what anybody else says that's what you are already even today okay so that concludes my third before you start therapy and um, again if you found this helpful if you subscribe and like comment interact with me it means a lot i find it very fun i'll see you in the next video